This truly is one of the most magical places in the world. Locals are very passionate about their privacy, their independence, their uniqueness. Many of them are hardcore. They live off the land and they embrace nature and the environment. When you're out on the, on the outer cape, you're in the middle of the ocean. We need the ocean. It's our escape. It's our natural antidepressive. It's what keeps us going. It's part of who we are. Cape Cod has the best wave in the summer. I looked at the sand dunes and the scenery. That was my vision of what a beautiful, perfect beach was in my head. And that's why I fell in love with Wellfleet. That's why we ended up uh, moving here. It was a laid back atmosphere. Everybody was just together and just having a good time and didn't have to worry about anything. It was the day that anyone that spends a lot of time in the Outer Cape is kind of the day we live for. It was close to 80 degrees, sunny, great, fun waves. If you wanted to ride a longboard, sup, boogie board, surf, it was pretty utopic. It was one of those days. I was at Newcomb Hollow. I watched Arthur and Isaac run from the parking lot past us to look at the waves, and they were so excited because they saw how good the waves were, and I remember one of them said to the other, it's even better than yesterday. And they were right, it was a, it was a great day for waves. Arthur was down for the weekend with his girlfriend's brother, who he was very close with, Isaac who was 16 years old at the time. Art was teaching Isaac to surf. And they were standing in the water. And that the water was like, like here. Arthur was doing a lot of the things that I tell my kids to do, which is stay close to shore, stay with a buddy, don't swim where the seals are, which, you know, is almost impossible here on the Cape. We have so many seals, they're everywhere. And while, you know, you don't want to be boogie boarding or surfing next to a big haul out of seals, I know what scent trail those seals are laying. And I know what can be behind those seals. My wife was counseling my daughter not to go surfing that day because she was suiting up to go surfing right when Arthur Medici was in the water uh, riding his waves. And, and my wife got on the phone, even with a bad reception there, and told her, absolutely not, you're not gonna go. And my daughter's response was, you know, I'm not alone, there's other people in the water, it's a perfect day, it's clear, it's sunny, the water's clear, it's a lower tide, it's middle of the day, so I'm following all the rules that are up on that big sign that say don't surf early morning or late evening or when the water's murky or when it's cloudy. Everything is, is safe. And as soon as she said that, she heard, you know, the screams. And then she says, Ma, someone just got bit. That morning, I was actually putting the boards on the roof, and that's when I was told that there had been an attack. A gentleman who was standing on top of the dunes said there was a lot of crashing in the water. Everybody get up on the berm. Everybody get up on the beach. And that's typically what you'd see when a seal is being attacked by a shark. You know, there's a lot of thrashing of that tail fin. As I'm about to go down the dune, I see this cluster on the beach, and I was like, oh my god, like, this is the real deal. So I dropped my board really, really quickly, and my natural reaction was just to run down there and see if I, I could help in any way. 
what happened to this poor kid. It was indescribable, actually, to, to see something like that. He was beaten on his leg, both legs, but one was worse than the other. I just saw him getting dragged under the water and then him appearing again with blood in the water. I got the bookie board strap, his bookie board strap, and tried to tie it around his leg to stop the bleeding, made a tourniquet. How do we get this kid back up? How do we get him have a pulse? How do we make this okay? And it was all hands on deck. They worked hard to resuscitate him, but they couldn't because of the shark bites uh, on the back of uh, his knee, which was the artery, the femoral artery. You could see the in indents of the teeth in his thighs. There was no blood coming out. It was literally just a lifeless body with just holes. It's gone. The whole blood was. I have heard from various people, including scientists, that yes, he bled out in the water. He was dead on the beach. Isaac said that Arthur was looking at him and he, he just breathed. That's like, he, just, he said, I think he would just say something. And then he did this and this out. Bye. It was very apparent that this was a fatal attack. And the pulse that was going through the, the community was, it was very heavy. I remember that I was crying from Queens to Cape Cod. We got uh, so much traffic on the way there. Everything was taking too long and I was like, I was crazy, I was crazy. The closest trauma center is Hyannis. On Route 6, with lights and siren, is a very long time, in excess of an hour. That's a lifetime when it comes to injuries like that. I just ran to the inside of the hospital. I want to see him so bad. When they got there, he was still when they see him, he was sleeping. And they said, Art, wake up. Wake up, Art. This is not true. Everything was normal. He was looking like he was sleeping. I thought I was dreaming. This wasn't real, but it was, was real. I lost Arthur.